Okay, it's going. All right, we are live. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> we um, I do want to apologize to everyone because we originally were supposed to be on Saturday, and then we made it Friday, and then we had to change the time, and <laughs> we were still late. <laughs> so <Yeah>. sorry, <laughs> sorry for that. Okay. Um, but yeah, so we're here discussing Never Night by Jay Kristoff. And is, <laughs> yeah, this is the Biblio Book Club. Um, if you guys haven't done a Biblio Book Club live show with us before, basically it's a really chill uh, read along thing that we do, like a book club thing that runs every three months. So the next one will be June through August because it's off a month within the year instead of starting in January. Mm -hmm. And um, the next one that we're reading is Seafarer's Kiss by. What is that one by? I don't. I always okay. want to say Mindy McGinnis, Julie? and I'm wrong. Julie. Well, Julia Ember. Yeah. Julia Ember, and um, yeah. So that's what the Biblio, Biblio book club is, and yeah. Um, do we want to start with like our ratings and some non spoilery stuff? Mm -hmm. Do you want to? Yeah. You do you want to explain the non spoiler thing you're the gonna synopsis? Yeah, so Never Night, <laughs> sure. Never Night is about a girl named Mia Corvair or Corvier, I'm not sure. And um, she used to be an elite in this world that is not our world. It's a fantasy world. Um, she was an elite. Her father was committed um, or charged with treason and committed. Um, sorry, I'm saying committed, but that's not the word I'm looking yeah. for. <laughs> charged to death, like he was killed, basically. And so sh Mia ends up deciding to become a assassin for the red church in order to avenge her father and her family. And she has magic. <laughs> There's magic mm -hmm. involved. And um, there is a cat, a shadow cat. Yes. Yeah. And I love him. He's a great. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So what do you want to start with your rating then, Cassie? Yeah, sure. I gave it a four out of five stars. Um, I liked it a lot. I really liked the story. It was very Game of Thrones, Arya Stark vibes. Um, but I did have some time to get used to the way it was written and, like, some of the choices that Jay Kristoff made in, like, he did. He does footnotes in this book, in case you don't know, if you haven't read it yet, he does footnotes, and it was really hard for me to, like, stop, have to go down, read the thing, go back, and it was very irritating to me for a while. <laughs> I didn't like that at first. So that knocked the star off for me. Yeah. Um, I don't know who's next. Who's next? Me. You can go. Okay, sure. cool. Um, it's so weird. I've never been on a live show with just three of us. It's always like, <laughs> so I'm like, oh, we have so much time to talk. <laughs> yes, yeah. Um, okay, well, <laughs> this is kind of, I'm still reading it. <laughs> but I'm on, I tried you guys all day. I've been sitting here reading this, um, but I'm on the last chapter. Sadly, I was so <laughs> close. So I guess I can rate it kind of, but I am so far without knowing the last chapter in the epilogue, I'd probably give this a 4.5 out of five stars Four, four point five. Um, similar reasons to Cassie, but the thing is I read, I read mine on, um, my Kobo and for the longest time I couldn't figure out how to figure out the footnotes and I actually had to like click the little number um, mm -hmm. every single time and I had to get it right every time so the footnote thing again for me it's not the book's fault the ebook was really really challenging and then you had to go back and push the buttons and so it was kind of annoying but I did kind of like the format still I got used to it um, and then there's I was talking to Cassie, which we'll talk about a little bit later, is the random throw-ins of different perspectives kind of threw me off sometimes. Like, I was like, what? Wait, that's not, that's not Mia anymore. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I really, really, really am liking it. Um, so probably about 4.5, I would say, as of right now. Awesome. And then, okay, so I read this book before it came out last year, so it has been a while since I've read it, so I apologize, I'm a little rusty with everything that happened in it, but I ended up it. <laughs> I gave it five out of five stars. It was probably my favorite book of last year mm. that I read. Um, and, it, like, one of the things that you guys have been mentioning, which I think 
um, I didn't have much problem with was the footnotes. And I think that was, it probably helped that like a month or so before I read House of Leaves, which is jam packed full of footnotes, but it's also like two pages at the back of the book as well. So that was just such a task and a half to, <laughs> to look at. So going into this with the footnotes was a lot easier for me to get the hang of because um, it wasn't quite as all over the place. So yeah. I didn't have much problem with it. So yeah. Yeah. Did you read it in print? Hmm? Did you read it in print too? In um, I read the ebook. Yeah. Cool. I did have an arc, but it was not a uh, finished, like there was a lot of things added to it in terms of the footnotes. So I was also sent an um, e-arc copy so I could read a more finalized version of it. Mm. Oh, cool. Cool. Nice. Um, yeah, I've only ever read one other book with footnotes in it that was a fiction book, and I didn't like that one either. So I <laughs> wish – well, I'm glad that I didn't know about the footnotes beforehand because I think I wouldn't have decided to pick it up. Yeah. Because I've, I have a bad taste in my mouth about it. But, like, the story was so good, I just – Yeah. I think I it took me until – it was good. It was like 10 chapters that I realized how to figure out footnotes in my Kobo. And then I was like, dang it. Yeah. <laughs> Cause I was going to try and read it without. And I was messaging Cassie and I said, well, maybe this would be a different perspective if you didn't read it with footnotes. And I'm so glad I found them because after I started reading them, I was like, Oh my God, I would have missed like such mm -hmm. good detail of the story. Cause the footnotes yeah. just really give it that, that more atmospheric vibe to it. Mm -hmm. Which it definitely, is, yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. Oh, I was just going to say that it definitely adds a lot of world building and things yeah. like that. We got a lot, we got a lot of different anecdotes talking about some of the different characters, um, some other things to do with the world. So it was a really like interesting way to do that world building that didn't really well, like I mean, it didn't disrupt the actual narrative, but it did in the fact that you had to mm -hmm. move away from the narrative to read it. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. that was cool. Try to click just like. It was like a non seam it was a it was a um what am I trying to say? What's the opposite of like a seamless way? Uh I don't know. Like, a word, but I know what you mean. disjointed or just grunted? Just dis I mean disjoint disjointed. Yeah, I guess kind of disjointed, but like not necessarily with a negative connotation of doing that world building because some of the best I mean, world building is so important to any fantasy novel. So, like, it was absolutely necessary, and he just chose to do it in a very different way, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. And different. speaking of that, like, of the world building, are you guys more of, like, a plot or a character-driven book person? So hard it, for me. Well, I find a lot of my favorite books are very character-driven, but obviously it has to be done really well. Mm -hmm. And having really awesome characters plus an exciting plot, a really interesting world just makes it for me. So that's why I really, really enjoyed this one because I think it had oh, yeah. a lot. It did really well in all those yeah. areas. I don't know. I like um, I like both. I'm not yeah. like <laughs> it, it all has to do with like how well you implement whichever one you're going to do. So like there are going to be authors mm -hmm. who can do one really well or one really badly and the other and vice versa. So like I don't know. Like, this is where it ends by, oh, I don't want to butcher her name. Cause it's is this what you were going to say about Emma's review? Thing that well, she uh, yeah, cause Emma from Emma Books just posted a, a her wrap-up, and she talked about how she didn't really like this is where it ends personally because it's totally character-driven. There's yeah. not a lot of plot happening in it. And, um, and that was one of the reasons that I really loved it because it was done so well. But, like, I've also read books where it's completely plot-driven and really well done, and so I like both. It's just... I don't yeah. know, I'm not super preferenced on that. Yeah, I'm definitely the same. I, you know, I came up with that question literally because of that, what Emma said. That's just so, yeah. just came to my head. That's so funny. Um, but we should mention if you guys do have any questions, we do have our Twitter open as well as the chat. So mm -hmm. if you have any questions while you're watching, please ask us. We would like to answer them as best we can. Um, yeah, I'm just going to check the Twitter quickly here. Yeah. Sure. Proud Book Lion asked on the chat, um, did you guys have any favorite characters you were cheering to become a blade? Um, so maybe we could still answer this non-spoilery without any... Just like, stuff? or do we just want to go into spoilers now? Like, do we have any non-spoiler stuff we want to talk about? Hmm. 
I, just, I loved everything, basically. I don't have much to say other than that. Read it. <laughs> you know what? I was, this is what I'll say before we go into um, spoiler stuff is, I was actually really surprised. Like, at first I was like, oh, I'm not going to make it. I'm not going to read it. And then um, I'm, like, such a huge fantasy person. Like, fantasy is my jam. And so I was, like, I started reading it. And then I just instantly was like, I think I'm going to like this. And, I, and then I couldn't stop. So I was like, okay, I have to finish it. Damn it. <laughs> and yeah, so I didn't definitely. think, I don't know. I just was like, it looks complicated. Like, for me, I was like, I love fantasy, but it, it just seems like a complicated book, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, I don't know if I'm really into it. And I think that may turn some people off. But it was like, it was just the beginning that was really confusing. And then once you get past that, it's like super easy to understand. And it was really engaging. So if you are reading it, I would give it a little bit. This feels mm -hmm. very much like a, um, like, if you like the Game of Thrones TV show, but are too scared or like, just don't like the books because they're too intense and they're too long, and they're too whatever, um, this is a really good book that you should try, because it feels like Game of Thrones, but, like, as far as the writing that George R. R. Martin writes, it's not as ridiculous in, like, the length and intensity and, like, Old English and all that stuff, so mm -hmm. I really like it. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I got the Arya Stark vibes. Like, I'm a huge Game of Thrones fan, too. Are you, I don't know, Cassie and Kaz, do you guys watch Game of Thrones? I've only read and watched like the first book slash season because okay. I was too intimidated to watch the series without reading them. So I'm just stuck. Uh, <laughs> just watch I'm, it. Just watch it. That's like the one series I don't read the books for. And I'm like happy I don't because of the shock factor I've, of the show. I don't know. Okay. I find that I feel like I don't, if I watch the series first, I won't end up reading mm -hmm. the books. And I've yeah. thought like, all of them. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so to be fair, I did, I watched, no, I read ep the book one, I watched season, ep season one, and then I did that with almost every single season. The only one I haven't read is A Dance with Dragons, and I didn't read that, but I have seen the rest of the okay. series. See, and I'm just like, I just watched them. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, but so the, the main reason that I would say to read those is because there are certain things that the Game of Thrones, like choices that they made for the TV show are just mm -hmm. kind of gross. I don't know. There's a lot more added rape to it than the yeah. books have and stuff like that. Um, well, I definitely say like it, Mia uh, Colbert, Colbert definitely reminds me of Arya Stark. Like that's what I pictured, mm -hmm. but then it was hard for mm -hmm. me not to picture her and like, I would see like certain scenes, which we'll get to in the spoiler area, where I'd be like, feel like I was like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> get into, but I, yeah, totally Arya Stark vibe. So, one thing oh, I yeah. do want to um, mention about this one is that it, it kind of read to me like a new adult fantasy because obviously oh, we have a, like a relatively yeah. youthful oh, character yeah. around the young adult age range but there is a lot of mature content like a lot mm -hmm. of violence like a lot of sexual content a lot of cursing and things like that so that's definitely True. a good thing to keep in mind because it could be quite confronting <laughs> especially the first couple of chapters where it like has a lot of sex scenes right from the get-go. Yeah. And there's there's a when when we get into spoilers and stuff, I do want to read one of my favorite quotes, which happens early on in the book, but it is sexually explicit and it has cursing in it. So <laughs> I just yeah, for sure if you haven't read it yet, that's a thing that you guys should definitely be aware of. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, like at the same time Oh sorry. No, go ahead. <laughs> I was gonna say at the same time I feel like that could probably if you're looking to get into a lot more of like the really adult high fantasy books, this might be a really good book to bridge the yeah. gap because mm -hmm. there is that kind of like ease of access with it being slightly younger characters, but slightly easy writing style, but you do yeah. get some of that more mature content. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like the next world as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like the beginning's kind of confusing, but then it gets like, it's like it gets confusing, but then like very easy to understand. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. just kind of like shits. <laughs> it throws um, a lot at you and then it, but it's really easy to, to bring the connections in, I guess. Yeah. yeah. And with the new adult thing too, it kind of reminds me of like the shock factor of like Sarah J. Moss's series with the Corthorne and Roses. Like when that scene like just like happened, if you watched it, you know what I'm talking about? You're like, whoa, wait a second. This is like intense. Um, mm -hmm. And I feel like it's kind of like that intensity of like mm -hmm. new adult. I thought it, for some reason I thought it was adult when I was reading it. 
I don't know. I think that I'm not sure if it's marketed differently in like in the U S and the UK, because sometimes it's put in the adult section. Sometimes it's not, but I think for the most part it is more leaning towards adult, yeah. but at the same time, because my, Remember when I was shopping for it at the library, at the library, you guys are oh. the captors and in Canada. And I was like, I can't find it anywhere. And you're like, look an adult, look an adult. And I like, I looked everywhere and it was in like the adult, like s fantasy section in hmm. Canada. I honestly don't know where mine was marketed because I got it from the library. If and anyone in the chat knows if it what genre, if it's um, adult, new adult, or whatever, please let us know. We're definitely well, going to ask questions here. It would definitely in bookstores be put under adult because there really isn't a new adult section. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I think that if there was, it would likely be there. But at the same time, it doesn't feel like a lot of new adult because the most of new adult that I've been exposed to is, like, contemporary. Yeah. Yeah. Um, really I'm looking at my, like, uh, at the uh, – like the page where it does like first edition copyright stuff and it says subjects revenge fiction um fiction fantasy epic fantasy historical fantasy fiction so i think if it was as young adult it would have said young adult because that's technically yeah. a genre which doesn't make any sense yeah yeah i think it would be more <laughs> if it was a thing new adult like kaz said there for sure yeah um okay yeah. let's move into some spoilers tweet tweet so, yeah, okay, do you want to get to that first question then? Yeah, so, so if you guys haven't watched it yet, or read it yet, I mean, bye. I should leave. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so the question was, uh, did you guys have any favorite characters you were cheering for to become a Blade? I have to think. I, 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 this is fresh in my mind, you guys. Okay, I'm glad. Then maybe you should start so you can yeah. remind me what the well, character's name is. Okay, well, there, okay. <laughs> there was Trish. I haven't had time to process, though. I think Cassie has the best spot. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't had time to process this yet. Go, Cassie. So, <laughs> there was the love interest, Trick, and then there were the brother and sister um, who end up being the Ashlyn problem. Ashlyn and Oslis, Oslis. Osric. And then there's Hush, the witch is the no teeth guy. And then there was um, Jessamine, which was, like, her rival. Uh -huh. <laughs> Jessamine, I didn't. I didn't want her to win, of course. Jessamine, she's. Uh, um, we're recapping for Kaz and uh, <laughs> and those I think were like oh the, Carlotta, me. Carlotta, Carlotta. Yes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I liked her. I liked yeah. her. Yeah, I liked her and um and her. um Ashlyn the best. Yeah. I, don't, I mean, obviously you were rooting for Mia, and I mean. Yeah. I have like a whole lot to say about Trick because I really loved his character, but mm -hmm. um, but like I actually didn't. I don't know. I didn't root for him the same way that I was like Carlotta and Ashlyn need to get through this, which is hilarious to me because by the yeah. end you're like, wow, fuck you, and you're dead. <laughs> <laughs> and I just read that oh. like literally before we got on that's what I'm I so glad I'm so glad I read that because yeah, I've that's been like the main what? Thing. I yeah, know it really what? throws some punches <laughs> yeah. yeah I I think I agree like Carlotta for sure Ashlyn I agree with you 100% like now that I just read it it's hard for me to say that but I, I right. get what you're saying it has like the best friend like like, yeah, like, it was like it was honestly so. I was a little bit irritated that they ended up doing what they did because what what Jay Kristoff ended up doing with his choices because like we had this beautiful best female friendship thing happening and you don't get that yeah. very often. And I was yep. like, no. Yeah. <laughs> kind of like, doesn't something similar happen in the Assassin's Blade novellas with Sarah J. Mass? Uh, well, you're like asking the right head. girls too. Yeah. Um, yeah. Doesn't the redhead do something? The main. But the she lets her run. Wait, she lets her wait, run. we're spoiling things. Stop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for for people who haven't maybe read it. I don't know. This is a bad, yeah. bad plan that we're going through right now. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think I think there is somebody in the Assassin's Blade that does that. It makes me want to reread it. But yeah, I would say those two. What about you, Kaz? Do you have any that you remember that you'd be like, Obviously, well, me. I mean, before everything that happened, I would have said the exact same thing. <laughs> yeah. um, and then I, by the end, there's like no one even to want to do it except for Mia because all the people you like are dead <laughs> or betrayed. I know. And it's just like a, which is like, 
kind of to be expected considering like it's an assassin school mm -hmm. um <laughs> but at the same time it was just like no i want i want my hope to be fulfilled mm -hmm. someone that i did end up actually um he uh hush i liked mm -hmm. I liked that we didn't trust him the entire time. And it's not that you, you trust him afterwards, but you, like, kind of see that he has this, like, I guess, morality about him. Like, yeah. this happened to you and – or you – what I don't even remember, like, what his reasoning was for giving her the notebook. But whatever it was, it, it made because sense. Because he – she – when he got in the fight, she was the only one that asked if he was okay. Oh, yes, yes. And so she's like, well, he's like, well, this is my favorite back to you. And then she felt bad because uh, it was her friend, right, that was just killed or whatever. Yeah. Which was sad because I really liked her, this, how her story, Coletta, Cor Corletta, Corletta. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, no, I loved his, like, mystery, but they make it seem like he's the one that killed everyone. Uh, and I was like, that's too obvious because he was standing there in the kitchen watching the two friends with his blade. Do you remember that? When yeah. they snuck out, her, him, her, Mia and Ashley snuck out and he was in the background and he was like waiting and just like staring. And I was like, that's too obvious. It's not him. <laughs> <laughs> mm. um, okay, we got another proud book line asked. Um, were you bothered by the mix of the old formal English and then there would be like between the persons more modern? I struggled with that, but maybe because I'm Swedish. Mm. I don't remember having a problem with it, so it probably wasn't something that I really had much of an issue with. Yeah. I watch a I lot do. of fantasy and stuff, so I'm like very, I would like that, so I don't think I noticed it very much either. Yeah. And I think it was actually, it was nice because that was how you knew you were getting a previous backstory or something, like a history. Yeah. And a lot of times it was, that was the history of either, like, what's the country called? I don't even remember. But, like, the history of the country or a, like, pre-this story starting Mia story. That was, like, how you determined it, I think, because it was a different narrator. I really liked that it – that was the only one that was easy to tell. And then sometimes you would get a random uh, viewpoint and you were like, wait, who am I reading? <laughs> what's happening? <laughs> Yeah, well, that just happened. Like, at, right before we pushed play here, I was like, I think I'm on this guy's perspective. Who is this? <laughs> I was literally like, it's just like that kind of threw me off more so than like yeah. the style. I love like the italics were nice to have to know that it was like in the back, um, the backstory. But it was the rent. There was, it didn't happen often when the different point of views came in. But when it did, I literally would read, like, a paragraph, and I was like, wait. And then I would have to go back and then, like, reread it. Oh, to fi to f before you figured out. Yeah, Ooh. I was like, oh, wait, that's someone else. I want to go back and read it. And then I'd be mm -hmm. like, oh, okay. Uh, it's nothing near as bad as Allegiant, though. <laughs> no. Oh <my> God. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had to. I had to yeah. do it. <laughs> I, I um, love that when I was reading that. I was like, am I the only one that notices this? And now it's like, uh, it's <laughs> yeah, it's so irritating. Um, um, we have another question from the Ferris fan girl. Okay. What did you think about the teachers? Which ones were your favorites, and which ones drove you crazy? Ooh. Oh, speaking of teachers, before we go, while we were thinking, did you guys get Harry Potter vibes? Oh yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I was thinking of like, um, like the professors and stuff. I was like, oh, that's kind of Harry yeah. Potter. It, um, it felt like Harry Potter and Game of Thrones put together. Oh, I like that. This isn't really a teacher, but I like the bookkeeper guy, Al, 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 Alias, Alias. Mm -hmm. alias. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like him a lot. But um, I know he's going to come more into the end here, but so I don't really know, but mm -hmm. uh, I liked him. I really liked the 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 brother and sister. Um, the, oh, that was cool. Um, but crazy. Mar Fascinating. Mariel and Adonis. See, I know I can get, I got Adonis, your back. Adonis, <laughs> yeah. Adonis and Mariel. Yeah, they were fucking cool. Like, creepy as fuck. Katrina just yeah. I kept getting mixed For up sure. that they were boy and girl, though, the whole time. Like, I was like, wait, they're brother and sister. And then I'd be like, I would keep thinking they're, like, sisters. And then I'll get them oh. mixed up a lot. Like, I was yeah. like, oh, no, that's the Weaver girl. No, and she's the, the Weaver. See, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
the skin weaver is the girl, <laughs> and then the the blood guy who also does the bath thing is the yeah. is the boy. And so I, the main thing that I like or that I don't know, I'm fascinated by them because one, they're magic, but also their story that we I did we like get an answer about why Marielle hated. Um, Nave or Neve or Nave or whatever so much. Like well, I just got I just finished before I got in here when they're at the end and she saved the brother and then they ran away, but I haven't read past that, so I don't know if they did uh, after okay. that, but I've, not anything before. Okay. That I know that there's like a portion sometime in the story where like the brother kind of explains it. Like all I know is that he was in love with Nave. And Marielle is mad at Nave for some reason, and that's why she wouldn't fix her face. And I, like, am hoping, which is, I know, I'm fucked up, but I'm hoping that there's some (laughs) weird um, incestual things happening. Like, that would be the ideal plot line for me. (laughs) Because that's what I want to happen. I did not expect you to say that. (laughs) Like, if any if any young adult author is gonna write an incest lo- storyline, it's gonna be Jay Kristoff, right? So like, yeah. make it happen. I could see it though because like with that being angry, it did feel very jealousy. I'm like, why? Yeah, are you doing this? Like, you're so possessive. <laughs> like, yeah, I definitely got those kind of vibes. And uh, proud book line says she had it in the adult fantasy section as well. So that who knows like. That could flow then. Well, even if it wasn't, yeah. that would be better, but I don't even know if it is. But, um, uh, okay, other professors. There was, oh, I love, I like Lord Cassian. He's a mystery. He reminds me of the Darkling from Shadow and Bone. Like, oh just God. mysterious. So and, creepy. I haven't I, read that. I, I like, I don't know, I, I have a, I think he has, like, some good side to him. Like, I feel like he's going to come out as, like, a good person and, like, lead her. Um, Mia in the future and help her understand herself. That's what I like. I think it might happen. So I, I liked Brittany. him, even though he was hardly in it. Brittany, mm. what? There's a thing that happens at the end. Oh, I haven't. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, well, I'm I'm expecting spoilers. So if you want to tell me, I'm like I just love him. <laughs> yeah, I I really was hoping that that what we would get in the next book is a Lord Cassian ends up being willing to tell Mia more of the secrets and stuff. Cause I think it's a really good like way to tell that like history story type of thing is to have a teacher do it in a, in a story, a fantasy story. But like, um, that's not going to fucking happen anymore. (laughs) Maybe don't say unless someone asks us a question. (laughs) Yeah. I I will. I tried. I try not to. Oh, you're the best. I I tried. I tried so hard, but I was like, I'm not missing this live show because I like this book. Usually I'm the one that's like two stars. (laughs) <laughs> like I know so every time, everyone's like four or five stars and I'm like that was like one star <laughs> so I'm like I'm gonna be a good person on this one <laughs> well I'm glad that this is the one that you loved because it's my yeah. baby yeah it's amazing I really liked it um I like what proud bookline said here she said yeah uh was I the only one that got annoyed how Mia used trick yeah, you know how when they were having that fight and like kind of I didn't like that either. Like no, I, I was like, what the "Fuck, are you doing?" Wait, do you mean in in the in like the battle part? Oh, but she was no. doing that for him. What do you mean? Like it ha- the way that I read it and the way that she ended up explaining it was like she was trying to piss him off, not so that. Oh right, yeah, not, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not so that like she could like get the better of him but so that he would actually be willing to fight and so that he would end up being right. able to win right. because, yeah yeah and i the whole time throughout the story you're like i was reading it and i'm like is she really an asshole and just using trick this entire time like for sex and stuff because that's very possible it wouldn't surprise me from her but but then by the end when that happened i was like oh so you actually care about him even though it's this weird Right. Whatever. I have to be honest. I the last bit I was speed reading, so I probably <laughs> liked it. I was like, yeah. Um, yeah, I remember that now. So hopefully that clears it up too as well. So yeah. you know what though? Speaking of Mia and Trick's relationship, 
I don't know. Something was off with Mia for me. Like yeah. I really liked Trip. But I felt something like was disconnected. I don't with with them too. Like I was like, yeah. Like I was, I was, I liked it, and I wanted them to be like more into each other. Well, I feel like it was kind of more one sided. Like Trip was more into her than she was into him, even. Right. But mm -hmm. yeah, I definitely, I definitely felt that, and I was just like, but I want more. But I think that I don't know. Maybe I don't know. It was the chemistry. Yeah. Like, I just felt like the chemistry was, it was too, like, it was like we're best friends. I don't know. I just felt like I didn't get, like, the vibes I would, like, from, like, a Sarah J. Mass book or something like that, where I was like, yes. Like, that I kind of was, like, skimming it, and I wasn't, I was like, mm, it feels kind of weird. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe it's just me on that and Kaz. Except you know? for the sex <laughs> scenes. Those were hot. Just saying. Yeah. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. But it was, like, but – with them i don't know it was it was weird yeah no i agree it was very one-sided it felt like he was i mean he was way into her and then she was just like mm, but i could get some sexy times out of this so i'm gonna keep it going yeah but was she she was a virgin wasn't she or was she had no. had sex with a uh with a prostitute right before she went yeah right right, right, right. Uh, before oh. that yeah she was wow um oh, this is so I do want to talk about, we don't have any specific questions, so I'm going to ask a question. Um, how did you guys feel about Trick's backstory and, like, all that stuff? Uh, sorry, I was reading if there was any questions. Sorry, can you repeat that? Oh, Trick's, Trick, Trick's whole, like, history, like, mm -hmm. where he comes oh. from, everything that we end up finding out about Trick. What were your thoughts? That's everything that I have to ask. Okay. actually. This is funny. I wanted to mention this. I recently just, I'm not going to spoil anything in the other thing, but I recently started watching Outlander on, on uh, Netflix, which I'm obsessed with, by the way, please. I mean, Oh my God, I'm shocked. I'm obsessed with it. But that's all I could think of. I was like, this is literally like copied from Outlander. Like that's all Somebody I could said that. I think it was Natasha or Sasha when they were reading ah. it. They said the same thing. Like, so, like the exact right. scene, the words, the number of things. Like I was like, that's weird that they said that. I'm like, this seems like, it was like almost identical. So for me, it distracted me from if you have a different thought. So that's exactly mm -hmm. my thought. <laughs> well, what about you, Katrina? I can't remember anything. Oh, okay. So, well, well okay. <laughs> First off, I bring this up because it is mo one of the most, like, controversial parts of Nevernight. Like, it's mm. one of the things that a lot of people um, have issues with for, like, the social like, stuff. Like, um, the right, he's wrong. Yeah, because Trick is, like, the the dwer dwer Mary dwer me can't yeah. say it. um feel and um are described a lot like how New Zealand Maori are um with their tattoos and them being from like island type people Pacific Islander type people mm -hmm. and like all that stuff so there's like some that's like a controversy in and of itself but like Trick's backstory in and of itself is that he was a the king or he was a princess's um, son, but she was raped by a white man, and that was Trick's father. Yeah. And then she, like... And that's why his name is, like... Yeah, the princess the ran away with him because the king wanted to kill him because he wasn't true. Dormir can't say the word. Yeah. Um, Hit it to the sea. Or yeah, and then when Trick finally does find out which... Or, like have the time or whatever he eventually goes back to see the king and then he gets tortured which is how he gets the the bad tattoos on his face that um they like yeah. discuss throughout the whole book so that's the backstory mm -hmm. so like i don't know i really liked actually listening to trick finally tell his story like that part was so intense to me it felt a lot like game of thrones again um <laughs> And I don't know, it, it, yeah, I liked, I liked it a lot, but I mean, I can see also why people were offended by it and stuff like that. Mm. <laughs> well, that yeah, because like when I read it, I didn't pick up on anything like that, but it wasn't until after the fact that someone like mentioned the use of like when one of the characters uses the word savage to describe that race. Yes. That was where a lot of the um, issues came in. So obviously I didn't pick up on it. Um, I didn't either. Yeah. Yeah. I all I thought about at the time was Outlander. Like, I, <laughs> I just, I, I, that's good you picked up on that though. But like, I 
like I enjoyed the scene, but I literally felt like it was literally like copied and pasted. It was like the weirdest thing to me. Mm. But that's interesting that you say that someone else mentioned that too. But Cassie, I feel like you always pick up on those things. And that's what's great to have you in these live shows. <laughs> well, this time, I don't know. Okay, I, to be fair, I don't know if I would have picked on it, picked up on it. But I had like read a lot of stuff about mm. the issues regarding this book when we decided or, yeah, around when we decided to pick this as a Biblio book club, I was like, well, I want to get more in tune with, like, the reasons people don't like this so that I'm aware of them so I can talk about them in the live show. Oh, uh, I love it. Love it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Let's uh, – I'll check. I haven't checked Twitter in a bit here. So, guys, ask us your questions. Let us know if you like the book. Uh, we do have a question from Ferris Fangirl again. Am okay. I the only one who realized that Ash was bi and completely unashamed for it um, and nobody else seemed to be w- too worried about it? I thought that was cool. I didn't pick up on that, which is sad. Now I want to reread it. Oh, I did. Yeah? That she was, like, in into- I- At the end. But I don't know if she – I don't know. Cause I haven't finished it, of course, right? So mm-hmm. she- I don't know if she runs into her again or anything. But – I was like, okay, I don't know if she's playing Mia because that kind of happened before all that stuff happened and she just kind of slapped her. Or at first I thought she poisoned her with like having something on her lips. Let's say if there's that. And then when she kissed her, I was like, I think she's distract. She may have distracted her or she's bi. But so I don't know. Yeah, I think that's maybe what I thought it was. Like, I didn't pick up on that as a true sexual tension or anything, which is, I mean, I hope. Well, the only line, wrong, what the line said, it was something like, um, she kissed me on the lips. It lasted longer than it should have. Than, than than like, but I didn't pull away or whatever. I'm not, it's not the exact words. I didn't pull away. And then uh, I had thoughts on my tongue. That's kind of mm. like, and then that was literally it. Was and that from Ashley's Mia. perspective? That was Mia. That was Mia's perspective. So, hmm. I don't know. Ferris fangirl, now that we said that, what do you think? You think it was a distraction? I don't know. I, don't know I love that I Skylar, the book lion, is watching this even though he hasn't read the book because he's bored. So, welcome. <laughs> welcome to the spoilers. <laughs> Um, I'm just trying to think, like, because I just read it. If there is any, like, say, I can't, I don't know. Going back to the favorite teachers, I also really loved the mother, the, like, old grandmother looking one who wears the key around her neck and then Hush steals it. Yeah, Yeah, I loved her because she felt like Professor McGonagall and (laughs) the love of my life. I thought that exact same thing. I imagined her like with like glasses and like a hat of some yes. like some sort. Yes, I loved her. I would love to know how Hush stole that though. Like I know. Can we get a novella, Jay Kristoff, please? Of just Hush's extravagant so stealing it. everything? Yeah. Yeah, That's because he's so silent. Yeah. And like, okay, I know that it was a, a way of, like, Jay Kristoff distracting us from everything that was happening, but, like, the few times that we get Hush's perspective throughout the novel where he's just, like, being weird in the silence <laughs> of the, like, when he's not supposed to be out of his bed was so creepy, and I was just like, what the fuck is this guy planning? <sighs> but it didn't end up being anything. But maybe he'll show up in the sequel and actually be bad. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. I feel like he's, like, he's just the distraction, like you said, and, like, he, he has a deeper backstory, and I think he has, like, a sweetheart inside. Like, I feel like he's, like, that scary guy that's a teddy bear inside. <laughs> like, that's what I get from him. But with, I mean, like, he kills that, people. So. <laughs> but he kills people. But, um, what was I going to say on that? Okay. So here's the thing, because I don't think we have any other questions. I have a good uh, Let me just check real quick. But I don't know, maybe, but when she said, I thought you'd never ask. That would be oh, um, I want to read my favorite quote, too. Yeah, read that first, right. and then we'll get into the okay. next discussion. So one of my favorite things that happened in this novel happened really early on. Like, it's, the quote starts on page 59, and 
it was like a positive sex or like I don't know, just the way that Mia talked about um the word cunt was amazing. Oh, yeah. So um prepare yourself because I'm gonna say the word cunt a lot. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Um, so the like the preface to when this story starts is like Mia says the word cunt in like context and Trick is like, What are you saying? And she's like <laughs> Uh, and then, so she says, what? And then Trick says, my mother said that's a filthy word. The filthiest. She told me never to say it, especially in front of Adonna. Oh, really? The girl took another pull on her cigarette, eyes narrowed. And why is that? I don't know. Trick found himself mumbling. It's just what she said. Mia shook her head, crooked bangs swaying before her eyes. You know, I never understood that. How being named for a woman's nethers is somehow more grievous than any other insult Seems to me calling someone after a man's privates is worse. I mean, what do you picture when you hear a fellow called cock? Trick shrugged, befuddled at the strange turn in conversation. You imagine an oaf, don't you? Someone so full of wank, there's no room for wits. A slow-minded bastard who struts about full of spunk and piss, completely ignorant of how he looks <laughs> to others. An, exhal uh, an exhalation of clove sweet gray into the air between them. Cock is just another word for fool, but you call someone a cunt? Well, you're implying a sense of malice there, an intent, malevolent and, and self-aware. Don't think I named Consul Skeva a cunt to gift him insult. Cunt ha cunts have brains, Don Trick. Cunts <laughs> have teeth. Someone calls you a cunt, you take it as a compliment, as a sign that folk believe you're not to be lightly fucked with. I think that they call that irony. <laughs> I read that and I was just like, oh my god, my favorite thing just happened and I don't even have anyone to talk to about it. <laughs> <laughs> Reclaim oh. that word. Yeah, exactly. I also like have this book on my shelf that I really need to read and it's just, the title is Cunt. And it's <laughs> it's this like feminine, um, feminist selection of essays and stories um, either written by this woman or like, um, she also is the one that put together the short short stories and it's all about like basically feminist ideas and how people took the term cunt and made it the worst thing ever because it's attached to a woman not because it's actually a bad word and I just find it fascinating so I was obsessed with that line yeah and then that would probably get your mind stirring when you heard that I thought that was an interesting little twist on that yeah it was my favorite thing <laughs> I really love when books do that though yes they shame yeah. away from nothing, right? Like, they're like, yeah. Yeah. and especially coming from a male writer. Mm -hmm. That's um, I'm just going to briefly go backwards talking about the ash and bisexuality. Yeah, um, okay. Just one, um, just kind of like half responding to the Ferris fangirl um, mm -hmm. with the question that we asked about whether, like, considering her being bi or whether it's a distraction. And I think that even if it was meant as a distraction, I don't think that necessarily negates her being bisexual. So it could have been both, but obviously yeah. nothing's really like explicitly said. So it's kind of up to our interpretations. Yeah. Um, but I did also just stumble across um, Jay Kristoff tweeting. He's like, the question of Mia's sexuality, obviously, because she didn't pull away with that, is explored more in book two. So that has me excited. Oh, did he, yes. he just tweeted that? No, no. Oh, I was like, is he watching? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez. Hi. Yeah, that would be really exciting. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I hope so that. Oh, yeah. yeah. I wonder if there will be. I mean, he could even go so far as to fuck with the Ashlyn and Mia, like yeah. being attracted to each other, because like that's would be even more interesting. Because then there's like that female female and she's a fucking bitch sorry yeah okay i'm not, I'm not yeah. gonna spoil anything of anything of this but do you guys watch the hundred no yes okay well you know clark and yep yep so like that's what i kind of like feel like sorry Cas. yeah second. but like you know that. yeah like that yeah. like there's like the rival and then like the like they're both rivals but they're both women it's like the best thing ever. It's like my favorite ship of like yeah. all time. It would be like, it would be similar to if Jessamine and Mia were attracted to each other, except yeah. that feels worse because they were, they hated each other from the start. Well, yeah. Jessamine hated her from the start. Whereas Ashlyn and Mia like created this friendship, even if it was under guise of being 
like a cover basically but <laughs> and you know what this makes a lot of sense too because here's the thing ashlyn was doing this in because her father pretty much told her to like she's like revenge on these people that you're my daughter and remember they were like you she imagine the pressure she has on her and da, da, and so maybe she doesn't want to be this person she just doesn't know any better yeah and that's true like conditioned that way as well she would have had like that upbringing like that was her pretty much life goal that's what she's been told for so yeah we yeah, we could see some um, character development in that, like in her maybe changing her mind or something. Yeah. I mean, that would that would be the ideal, honestly. I wish that would happen. Yeah, That's so like good that. call, Ferris Fangirl. That was like a really good, like, what's the, what's the booktube videos when it's like theories? Yeah, like theory. Mm -hmm. Kind of like spawned into that. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Um, yeah, so I was going to say for the different kind of like classes like i was like thinking something like that you know how they had like the hall of songs the hall of oh God. See, um shadows shadows um, oh the pockets. pockets pockets and what was what the was the one spider killer guy that's potion girl girl see i don't know who's a guy and a girl in this show in this freaking thing. <laughs> yeah but I loved, I loved her too. She was one. It was a girl. Yeah, oh but her almost all of them are girls except for Pockets and Songs. Those are the yeah, Solus. I more. didn't like him. I hated him. Oh. I didn't like. I really wished that. Well, I think part of it probably had to do with like her starting off not great, but uh, like you know, clashing with him. But I really wanted her to be able to use her powers during. The final test even though like she ends up winning to be to, uh, in the end anyway but like i think it would have been such a cool scene to watch her like now get into her power and be sword fighting at the same time like oh, yeah it would have been cool to read i don't know yeah so oh my god sorry I, we're gonna go into that in a sec but how have we not talked about the cat yet oh my god <laughs> <laughs> my favorite Oh, he's so funny. I Do you guys think of, like, the chat? Like, how do you imagine this thing? Like, how do you imagine it? I imagine him like a black cat with, like, like pieces of shadow, like, attached to him. So, like, he's kind of, like, moving, like, almost like a ghosty yeah, like really thing. Really edges, not really clear yes. cut. Yes. Okay, yeah, yeah. I imagine, him like, like, smoke kind of, like, just, yes. like. Yes, yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. yeah. But like, I love how funny he cat. Yes, he has very much a Cheshire vibe, like his personality. Mm, I love definitely. it. So, who's your I, favorite Kaz? Yeah, I always love like animal companions because I've been I've been reading uh, Sabriel by Garth Nix, and in the first one, there's a white cat, and in the second one, there is a dog, and oh my god, they're the absolute best. <laughs> so, like again, no. so do they talk too? Like, yeah, they, yeah. Oh my like this. Like, the cat in the first one's super sassy um, and just, like, kind of, like, helps Sabriel, but at the same time, like, enjoys being really cryptic. And then yeah. the dog in the second one is just such a dog. <laughs> like, it's <laughs> really, like, Aww. fun and energetic personality. Aww, um, cute. But, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, love, I it. love it. It's like, at first, I honestly thought that he was, like, actually bad. Like, I was, like, I feel like something's, like, not right with him and he's gonna like screw her over but then as it like went on and he kind of admitted that like he doesn't even know who he is himself it it kind of i was like oh okay. Yeah, okay and i like i want to get i can't wait for more information on like what these beings yeah. are and like how because mm -hmm. like um at one point i remember the cat he says something like before i was with you i was just a shadow waiting or something yeah. like that so like, um like he has to like find his master or something mm -hmm. oh hey mm -hmm. wait where's binks oh i need to get binks he's super my playful cat, right now he's not gonna let me do this my cat will not no me i mean you heard her running around just before <laughs> but she would not be willing to come and snuggle me <laughs> <laughs> my cat will snuggle me unless and only if she chooses only Hello. if she chooses I mean, my Hedwig mom. usually lets me force him into it. Aww. My cat's a big bit. Unless it's me. <laughs> um, yeah, so, okay, so back to, like, the other things. Like, if you 
were in this like assassin camp, which class would you want to attend? Mm. What do you feel like would be your jam? Mm. Um, um, okay, was there, so there's the stealing one, there's the, oh. Towards the potion, like the smelling potions, and then, what's the other one? The sex one. That's the one I would be good at. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not for the sex part, but for was the, that like. A hall? Was that even a Yeah, car? yeah. She's the one who sends them in to get secrets. Um, right, and she has, like, the long black hair, and she's all, like, sexy. Yeah, it, the the whole thing, the reason that I think I'd be, that one would be the one I'd like is because you get to play the, you're you're putting on a front so that you can end up with things that you need to know, you know? Right, so like, yeah. I yeah. like the idea of being able to, like, pretend to be friends with someone to get information. Wow, I sound like a crazy person. <laughs> so, like, uh, take that with a grain of salt. Yeah. So... It's Getting so, a good insight into your character here, Cassie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you guys trust nothing. Oops. I honestly, like, it's so hard for me to choose because I honestly think, like, if it was just little old me going into it, I oh. wouldn't be cut out for any of it. Oh, yeah, I mean, true. But, like, out of but, all of them, I think that would be the one that I'd be best at, I guess. Mm-hmm. Mm. I think for me, it would either be that one or... Probably the swords, because I like <laughs> activity. Yeah. I like See, fitness. Like and I'd like, probably ooh. pick potions after that. I was horrible in chemistry, I, so I'm not I'm going to pick that one. <laughs> yeah. But I just feel like I, it would be similar to, like, making food. I don't know. You yeah. put ingredients together and then make something. I hate that. Yeah, I'm definitely going to be good at that. Song. I would definitely be Hall of Songs, that's for sure. Uh, Mr. But I'm definitely not sneaky enough to do pockets. Like I could not. No. I think that would in- because I'd want to be able to pick pocket. Uh huh. <laughs> I okay. I don't know. Uh, uh, I used to like be kind of stealing <laughs> things from a store, but that's not the same thing. Like I've never been able to steal anything off a person. I've wow. never. I'm I terrified to do that. But I'd be curious if I was any good at it. Yeah. Yeah. I'd be too um, nervous. I would get like freaked out and then I'd run away. <laughs> um, I think I'd just, like stall too much and just not go <laughs> and do it. Yeah. Not the right time. I can't do it right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm way too clumsy. I would not be able to do that. I know. I'd end up dropping it on our my way out and then be like, ah, oops, bye. <laughs> oh, sorry. Right. Um, <laughs> The the fair fan girl said, "Oh my God, Mister Kindly is adorable." It just reminded me of how funny is his name, like Mister. I know. I love. Oh my God. Okay, I'm just gonna like. I love the names that Jay Kristoff comes up with. Have you read the synopsis for Life Like? What's that? Is that the name? well? There's a, it's no. It's like a different series. Oh, okay. Or. I'm not sure if it's a single standalone, but it's a different, um, completely separate from Never Night. Mm-hmm. But one of, like, the two, like, side characters, main side characters, one of them is called Lemon Fresh, and the other one is called Cricket, and I think, I think <laughs> Cricket's, like, a droid or a robot or something like that. It's, like, super sci-fi. Lemon Fresh? Oh, my God. Yeah, Lemon <laughs> Fresh. I feel like Jay Kristoff. <laughs> Like, the reason I love Jay Kristoff so much is because he's so sarcastic. Like, yeah. I remember reading um, Illuminae, which, which is co-written, that. and I can, like, I swear to God, I can hear, because I, when we went to Y'all West last year, we watched Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff in a panel, and they're mm-hmm. both super sarcastic. Mm-hmm. But um, okay. <laughs> I remember watching them then, and then I read Illuminae after that, and I read it, and I was just like, this is just them talking out loud. Like, it's just. Yeah. <laughs> I read, yeah, and I read Illuminate too. I wish I, I wish I kind of read this one first and then Illuminate because Illuminate I just thought was okay. But that, but I, I was going to say I love the These Broken Stars series, but that's Amy Kaufman. And uh, Megan Spooner, yeah. Right. Yeah, and see, I like that one more, which is interesting. I don't know. Um, what else? When is his second one out right now? Because I heard about it. 
It comes out really soon, though. Do we so, know it's called? Is it it's September of this year? I don't remember. Yeah. Mm, okay. And well, what, what is it called? God's Grave. God's Grave. Oh, that makes sense. Well, I'm glad it's coming out in September because Sarah J. Mass is not releasing her book until the next year. So I might no, as well. No, but one. September comes Kayla's <laughs> book, which I feel Power like is going to be really important. Like, you're, no. it's not a novella that you can't read. It's a yeah. the full time book. And it, yeah. it's going to be so important to the plot because you know that Sarah J. Mass is going to tie in everything that he's been doing wherever mm-hmm. he is. I'm trying really hard not to spoil anything yeah. <laughs> and bring it all in, into the end plot. I mean, look at the way, like, you can't not read The Assassin's Blade now at this no, point. Can't. Like, you need <laughs> to read it. Just, if anyone's thinking about reading Throne of Glass or, like, hasn't read Assassin's Blade but has read maybe the first couple books in Throne of Glass, yeah, you need to read you it. You need to read it. <laughs> <laughs> it is absolutely necessary to read at this for point. For the last book, for the fifth book, for sure, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, let me do a little quick check here. Um, I know Friday nights are the good best days for live shows, man, but let's see here. Anything on Twitter? Yeah, it's good. Does anyone have any, like, last things to say about the book? Mm-hmm. Last comments? Well, I'm going to mm-hmm. finish it, so thank you for not spoiling the ending. <laughs> You're welcome. I only have a chapter and an epilogue so that's great <laughs> <laughs> I, I do I um what was the thing I was just gonna say like I I know a lot of people or a couple at least one person was complaining about the amount of cussing in the book but like that was one of my favorite things because it just feels more like real life <laughs> yeah it's like, I don't like really cussing. annoying yeah, you don't big... like cussing no I say I don't mind cussing I, mm. I cuss a lot <laughs> yeah, I'm a huge I'm a sailor mouth and like I'm a substitute teacher for all grades and mm-hmm. starting in middle school everyone is cussing so like it's part of life and I it irritates me when the 17 year olds who don't have any parental supervision aren't cussing I'm like who what that's <laughs> not real what <laughs> just be yourself <laughs> yeah <laughs> And, like, they're all like, oh, my God, sex? What's that? And I'm like, dude, if I had a mom who was not around when I was in high school, there would have been a lot more things happening in my house (laughs) than there was at the time. So, I mean, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. Um, I'll say this, like, without finishing it, um, the the number one takeaway is – at first, I was in, thought I wouldn't like it just by the synopsis. I started it. It was confusing, but I knew I was going to kind of like it, and then it turned out I really loved it. That's like kind of my overall thought. And I didn't mind the footnotes or anything. It's just a pain in the ass on that e-reader. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it was $40 in Canada, and I didn't have time to order it, so I was like, that's what I have to get. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that are my final thoughts for the You. What about you, Katrina? A couple of months after you've read it. I just, it's time for me to reread it, I think, because <laughs> I'm so excited about the next book oh, and I yeah. want to put my hand on an arc, but apparently this, 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 it's just going to be so hard to do that, but I'm just like, I need it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I know, like, and this would be a really hard read to, like, be a year away, like, having mm-hmm. read it a year ago and then coming back yeah. into the series. Like, I feel like you should reread this book anyways, like, because of the footnotes like it's so in depth like I was like I'm not gonna remember this like I feel like it's a reread book to really fully understand the world like I get what the characters are like and all that kind of stuff but to understand it more I feel like it's a good reread book Mm -hmm. yeah so you won't be disappointed in rereading it Cassie what about you I just I really liked it I'm surprised at how much I liked it considering how irritated I was to begin with because I like (laughs) I remember the, like, first hundred pages, I was yeah. so annoyed with, like, I didn't like how it kept doing footnotes. It was just like, why are these so long? Like, why are they stopping me in the middle of a chapter? It's so irritating. And mm-hmm. then, like, I also didn't like how we kept going back and forth from Mia's, like, current perspective to, like, the backstory of what she was doing. And it's all so cryptic that you, like, don't even really get anything to begin to, like, yeah. with it at first but then by the end you're like holy shit this is amazing 
Yeah, like you gotta give this book time. That's why I think like the big and how many do we know? Is it just a trilogy? I think think it seems like a trilogy kind of book. But this could this world I feel like could go a long way because there's so many characters and the world is like so in depth. I feel like it could literally be like a six book series. Yeah, and we could even end up with a trilogy about Mia, but then a prequel series and then a yeah. future series, you know, the Cassandra Clare way to go. You could do that with this fantasy oh, world. Totally. Uh... <laughs> Hedwig just tried to jump into my window. We have, I'll show you. Oh, blinds? It's, a, it's this oh. window. He's now in there. He jumped up and just fell <laughs> backwards. And, uh... <laughs> and I died. Oh. <laughs> all right well i think that that's gonna be oh, everything should we say that the video challenges for the violin Bibliothon are coming very soon yeah yes. probably tomorrow hopefully tomorrow probably tomorrow, tomorrow. yay yes. hopefully tomorrow the next day video challenges are gonna be amazing they're gonna be awesome and then our next biblio book club again is the sea ferris kiss by Julia Ember, Julia Ember, Julia Ember, Julia mm-hmm. Ember, um, and that's running until the same month as the Bibliothon. It ends in July. Yeah, so we'll probably do the live show in August. Just a heads up, because same as this one, because we don't want to do the live show for uh, the group book for the Biannual Bibliothon, which is Flame in the Mist, right, by Renee yep. Abbey. Yep. So don't get those two confused. <laughs> Um, and yeah, I think that's all we need to say and expect the video challenges coming your way soon and then the reading challenges to follow. Yes. Woo! Yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks for joining me, uh, us together on um, Friday night. Yeah. yeah. Have a good weekend. Happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. Yeah. <laughs> and we'll, we'll see you soon. Yeah, I'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.